updated information on what? Well, we uh, you often tell us of your your children who tell oh. you all the information and who if that's her, thank you because yeah. it's been really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because we had information from my son-in-law. That was my daughter, our young, Bruce is my youngest daughter, Kaylee. Oh, okay. And they're here for Christmas. Yay! Yay! Me and John, and they got married here in the summer of 2019. Luckily, it wasn't scheduled for this summer, so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, I think so. Oh, so do I need to make you host again, Jody? You want I me to let people in, then yes, you would. Yeah. So, oh, what what did I go to? I went to. You can go to my yeah, participants, then click on my name. That's right. On the three little dots, I think. Thank you. It's actually, it's a little carrot. A carrot. It. Yeah. Okay. Change host. Okay. Thank you. We'll move along on this. You're the host for now. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start out. Um, and if you recall last time, oh, hi Kelly. Hey ladies. Hey. Last time we made, oh dear, sorry, hold on. Um, we made a really smooth ball because we were making a symmetrical pinch pot was our goal. And so um, I'm going to plug in my camera now so I can show you, show you my ball of play what it looks like nothing super special okay share screen oh there we go so i have your little ornament sitting on my under my camera so uh, when they're little cracks like this and stuff then i smoothing them over to get a nice smooth ball all the way around. There's some other cracks on mine and I'm just, my clay is really moist and forgiving right now because it's just from a new bag that I just got from Clay Arts. Thanks to Yuriko Bullock, brought it, drove it up for me because they were coming from California. It was very nice of her. Very, very nice of them, Jess, she and Sam try to pick up things for each other when if anybody's going by hey mary jane mm -hmm. remind me what are we building so i know how much clay we're, to get we're doing asymmetrical pinch pots okay so you don't need a lot of clay we'll do okay. three or four and you just need a handful each time nice much. so the first thing we're going to do and um what this wonderful paulus berenson says is really important, I'm gonna move this down, is to sit quietly with your clay. Um, and hold it in your hands and really breathe deeply and um, so that you can connect with your clay. And he said, you have your feet flat on the ground, or if you're standing, your feet mm -hmm. will clear flat on the ground. And close your eyes. And as you take deep, long breaths, feel as if you're breathing, your breath is entering the clay. And then as you breathe in, work on feeling what is your clay giving back to you and telling you. And he recommends doing this for several minutes, which always seems like an incredibly long time, especially when you're doing it with a lot of other people. So I think we won't do it for several minutes, but he talks about really going through, doing it as a meditation and going through your body, thinking of the soles of your feet and that they're planted and moving up through your legs and your knees and your groin and relaxing each part of your body as you go along and really thinking about the and feeling the clay become a part of you. And taking that all the way up through your body, through your chest and your neck 
and your head and get everything stacked up nice and evenly. Take some deep breath, a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then if you recall, when we did symmetrical pinch pots <clears throat> with our eyes closed, we put our thumbs in the center and started pressing and rotating, press, rotate, press, rotate. And there was a, there was a rhythm that we tr worked on keeping exactly the same as we rotated our ball in our hands and turned it into a small pot. The difference this time, there's going to be a difference. As you press and rotate, you're going to vary your rhythms and vary your speeds and vary how hard you press in because we're, work, we're still working on feeling and being with the clay, but it's a more playful, playful way to do it. You may do this with your eyes open, but if you'd like to try doing it with your eyes shut, it's pretty fun to see what you come out with in the end. So I'm going to take my thumb and press it in what seems to be the middle and then do a few presses and turns and then change the angle of my thumb a little bit. Anyway, you get the idea. So you might press a little close to each other and quickly and then some longer presses and deeper presses and see how it goes and all the time be thinking about how quiet your body is and how your mind is visualizing where you're pressing on the clay. And maybe you're, maybe this time rather than being so determined as we were last time to make perfect spirals, Maybe this time you spiral up toward an edge and then back down. You can press it some into your other hand, vary your pressure, pressure that way. And I think with this one, we'll see how thin we can get. How far can you take this ball of clay? You can stroke the inside with your thumb. You can alternate your thumb and your fingers. Then as you're getting toward, I don't know, everybody goes at different speeds, but if you feel as if you're getting towards the end and it's getting really thin, you can continue with your eyes closed or you can open your eyes and look at your piece, set it on the table in front of you and work on it more to make it even thinner. determine where the bottom of the pot is going to be. Where is it going to rest?
a lot of bowls that are made this way that are made more less round more asymmetrical um, and seem to fit in your hands nicely are called baking bowls there's a and um, made in where the Buddhist monks are more prominent and you know wander from town to town with their bowl uh, you know asking for food and sustenance they make their own begging bowl um i honestly don't know the history of anybody knows the history of that but um often you see when you see um asymmetrical pinched bowls display they're yeah. called begging bowls you know so they're bowls that you would hold in your hands that are rough you know natural and rough and um, not necessarily rough to the touch, but you know what I mean, not, not works of art, but they are works of art. They're, you know, they're imbued with this purpose. More organic. More organic, indeed. There's, there's a towel right there on the chair if you want a towel. I don't want a towel. I'm sorry. There's lotion on the desk too. I just don't want so funny after spending all these, you know, months trying to perfect round and symmetrical. It's really hard to be asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Even with my eyes. I know mine turned out pretty symmetrical too, even though I jumped from side to side. But I'm doing better now that I'm looking at it. It's becoming I'm much it's more be asymmetrical. Yeah, you can follow, if there seems to be a dent in or a dent out, you can follow that and accentuate it. Play is so soft. Okay. Yeah, mine is super soft too. But also feels so good. <laughs> Do I know where Vicky is today? No, because the, the harder clay is drier. True, but it wouldn't stick to your it's a matter of different hands with sealing the moisture. Uh he's coming. Here she comes. Oh, good. I had my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, li I'm listening because I'm not at all ready. <laughs> it's okay. You just need a bottle of clay. I was going to say I need a bottle of wine. <laughs> oh, well, that too. <laughs> You're not the only one that's talking about that this evening. I, I have a glass poured already. Oh, God, I'm so ready. <laughs> Actually, wine or pot might be really good to do this project. Amen. I think so. Kind of a free flow thing. Okay. Our pot is very symmetrical. Mine is too, but I love it. I don't care. Well, I've written in the instructions that um, there are no mistakes, but I don't know. Symmetry could be one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the evil twin of perfection. That's right. Go on. I don't know. That twin is my friend. <laughs> Although I will say, wants to be I think that's one of my husband's 
biggest critiques of architecture is if it's too symmetrical. Oh, really? Yeah, two windows here, two windows there, you know, yeah, I would agree to with this, that. to that, just like, was there no creativity, <laughs> creativity here? Yeah, it's something you do on the computer with a, with a certain program. I wonder all those yeah. little New England houses, you know. Salt box. Salt box houses, yeah. I haven't done a pinch pot. I've been working slab. Mm -hmm. I'm such a pinch pot at it. So is it, are they getting thinner? Mine, I'm making it thinner. It feels yeah. good every time I feel it thinner. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're just supposed to go as thin as you can on this one. My yeah. edge is cracking. I just smooth it as I go. Just smooth it as you go. Yeah. I don't know if I can do the much more on this. It's so soft. It's just flopping. Mm -hmm. I have these beautiful blown glass dishes that I got years ago mm -hmm. that are perfect for setting around bottom. They're very like they're art glass. And oh. I use them as forms. That's cool. <laughs> because. That's a good use for them. It would be nice to just put them on display, but you know. <laughs> well, I managed to poke a little hole in mine, so we'll see if it's just gonna stay or it's gonna go. That wouldn't be a very good begging bowl. No. <laughs> don't want your soup to run out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, mine, mine still has a really thick bottom. I didn't realize. You know, you can borrow from the bottom and mm -hmm. extend it up. And then you make a little more. More room for soup. Heck yeah. I'm having a really hard time doing asymmetry. I'm not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> She's been cured. Okay. I'm going for the dumpling, the, the, the Chinese dumpling look. <laughs> The folded, well, that's another way to get things asymmetrical. Somebody else coming. Okay, is everybody getting to a good stopping place on this first one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably, maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think I like this the best of all the techniques. Oh, there's my hole. It came back. <laughs> oh, what? oh yeah. Oops. Oops. What kind of clay is that? Um, this is um desert gold. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got I have a bunch of it now. I'd run out. Is that the one I'm using that's speckled? No. That's um, very, that's speckled buff or very speckled buff. Okay. Cause there are two, there's an Idaho buff that has speckles, but they were out of it. They said all of a sudden everybody had wanted it. <laughs> they sold out of it. They had to make more. Interesting. Yeah, they were out of desert gold for a while too this year. Hmm. Well, do you think the pandemic made it so that they had to stop mining it? I no, I don't think so. I think the pandemic made it so that people who are at home are using more clay. Oh yeah, that would That's make sense. I was thinking too. Yeah. yeah. But oh the gosh, pottery right? supply stores are saying too. Everybody had to go buy their own supplies. 
Mm -hmm. They're like just slammed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one way to work on an ace. Mine's much rounder than I don't want it so round. I don't know. Mine's, mine's very symmetrical. Oh, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. See, I didn't see. Show, show, show. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that oh, looks nice. good. Thank you. Mine's getting floppy. Mine's really yeah, mine's floppy. Look floppy. at this. <laughs> Are they supposed to be floppy? Well, if you well, make them really, really thin, they would be floppy unless your clay is super stiff and hard. Uh-huh. So maybe I'll, I don't like that curve in mine. Anyway, so the next one we're going to do, it's, I have written down here, you pinch until your bowl feels finished. So Until it's finished. Put your name on it. But sometimes you may, if you want to smooth it a little more and your clay is really wet, you should probably set it aside and then, you know, finish it when it's sturdier, when you can actually um, smooth it if you want it smoother. I took a little dart in mine there. So you can set that aside and take another piece of clay just about the same i don't think there's any reason to not to use more or less necessarily just what you're comfortable with mary jane i wanted to show you this pot that my friend gave me for her wedding it's thrown but look what they've done to it oh yeah nice and it's really pretty how it's just got this mm -hmm. little finger pinch Nose. thing going here right it's just that possibly is where when she was throwing it it was thin and it ripped ah because I know um, my teacher I have one of his bowls that's similar where yeah. it has a little a little pinched place on the edge and um, I know how that happens it's just it's like a place where thing you know either it ripped or it's much thinner there so it's not the rim isn't um, proceeding evenly so uh -huh. you just um, make it a embellishment rather than right throwing it away rather than yeah discarding it. So this next one, oh, sweetheart, you're going to mm -hmm. um, make a ball again. You too. The ball doesn't have to be perfect or symmet as symmetrical as your first one. And your first one doesn't have to be completely symmetrical. Didn't need to be, oh, this is big. Completely symmetrical either. If you're not trying to make a symmetrical bowl. But, so this one though, we are going to make it into a ball. And you're always welcome to close your eyes. A symmetrical ball. No, this one we're making a more or less symmetrical, more symmetrical than not symmetrical, because we're going to use a different pinching technique and see where it takes us. Um, <clears throat> there are no there are no wrong ways to pinch a bowl, and everybody will develop um, technique that feels best to them. Um, and a lot of times, well, it's very common to use your thumb on the inside and your fingers on the outside, but there are times when that doesn't work for me and I use my thumb on, I trade back and forth between having my thumb on the inside and the outside of the bowl, ball, or the bowl. So I have my ball here. And this time I'm going to start opening it, but I'm going to open it with, instead of having opening it with my thumb like that, I'm going to open it with one of my fingers and then oh. rotate it and have my thumb on the outside, which really changes the feel of what's going on and also gets a lot of play in your index fingernail. <laughs> but instead of um, the pinch turn, pinch turn, I'm going to start 
pulling and smoothing with my thumb and see where that gets me. So you can see, you know, making these marks with my thumb. And as my hole gets larger, I can put two fingers inside. It's not quite big enough yet. And so just, it's just a different way of thinning the clay. It seems pretty um, pointy to me here on the bottom. So I'm going to put it in my hand so I can press my index finger against my hand and flatten the bottom a little bit more because I don't want it to be quite that pointy. I want more of a bowl. But I'm going to keep my thumb on the outside this time and see where that gets me. So you can, I don't know if you can see very well, but I'm, I'm pulling with the side of my index finger also against my thumb and smoothing it back. And all of us have thumbs that are different shapes, so I'm sure, <laughs> depend on what your thumb looks like. But this is definitely turning into more of a bowl and less of a cup, usually. When my thumb's in the middle, it seems to grow taller. Be this there. one seems to be growing. <laughs> Mine doesn't get thinner. <laughs> one of the things I lo do love about making pinch pots is um, smoothing the inside of the bowl while it's in your hand. It just mm -hmm. gets so smooth. I find that so satisfying. I don't try to do this. this outside, but it's not as successful. No, but having your thumb on the outside allows you to smooth a little more than with your fingers in some ways. But you know, it's not the same for everybody. I'm not getting this one at all. Is it asymmetrical though? See, getting it. Oh, well, it's just not getting thinner. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. But it's getting flatter, right? It just like a hole in a, I don't know. Now I can do it better with more fingers, I guess. Well, I think that's part of, um, you know, it just, it's trying something new and seeing how it changes what you do. That's. That's what the lesson is about. Not always doing it the same way. Mm -hmm. So actually Very by, the, different. by the time I'm, I've had it opened and I'm working on the edges, it's very usual for me to take my thumb on the outside and roll the edges up to make them taller. So I don't know if you can see that you roll I'm just stroking my thumb from the bottom to the top. And I certainly managed to make my rim asymmetrical. And if you want your edge to go back in more, you can put your thumb on the outside and roll it over your index finger on the inside. And that actually will coax it to be a little bit smaller and turn in. Hey, Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. Who else? I think Jody does. Who else? I can't tell what Jenny has. Who else has the, like the fresh porcelain clay? I have um, the golden, what's it called? You were talking Desert about. Desert gold. No. Desert gold. I, I do think Jody, have... Jody has porcelain. Is it oh, a fresh she... bag? Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's very fresh. Yeah, 
yeah, because Mary Jane, the porcelain is almost, you're almost unable to do much of anything with it because mm -hmm. it's so wet and floppy. Mm -hmm. These other people were having that same issue with it. Speaking of porcelain, Mary Jane, um, would you be able to set aside that half bag for me at some point mm -hmm. when you have time? Mm -hmm. I pick it up and leave you a check. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, sure. Check or what cash. What are you making out of porcelain? Um, well, I've decided that with glazes, I'd like to do more mm -hmm. using the um, under glazes as a watercolor and do painting on the so porcelain is good for that because it's clear and then I'm gonna try some with um, a white slip over the colored clay. I'm gonna start playing with trying to bring some of my love of drawing and into the um, into the glaze. That'll so, be nice. Um, yeah. I kind of decided after looking at hundreds and hundreds of things, that's what really made my heart happy. So other, other things as well, but I think I'm going to focus on that for a little bit. Yeah, I have some um, underglazed watercolors that Oak was trying out that are quite lovely, but they um, they won't wouldn't show up well on a darker clay, I don't think, because they're very. But if you cover the darker clay with a uh, white underglaze, then you could watercolor mm -hmm. over that. Right? Yes, you could. And then have like the inside be clay color and the outside be something different. Mm -hmm. So would that be or like a, would that be like double glazing it? You'd glaze it once with the white, and then you'd glaze over it. Right, because if you use when you use under glazes, you need to put some glaze over it, a clear glaze. Um, the under glaze is very stable. In <clears throat> two firings, is that? Well, you you can put the under glaze on um, before the bisque firing. Oh, so um, so it's but they, not two glaze firings. So you wouldn't do do two glaze firings necessarily. I mean, you always can. Um, the watercolor underglaze, it's all water-based, but these are, <clears throat> these look like watercolors and they're like in a little watercolor palette with, you know, with, where are my hands, with little different colors like you have when you buy kids' watercolors. But they're wow. pricey because they're glaze. <laughs> and, yeah, they were, they were not cheap. <laughs> and and um, make the colors. but they're fun if you like to watercolor. They're, sometimes, um, Certain colors will disappear though too at the cone five where I fire. But Mary most Jane, can you, can you do like the white underglaze while, you know, for the green um, when it's, you know, leather hard and then do watercolor over that for the bisque, you know, while it's being bisque fired or do you always have to wait to do the underglaze for the, um, Glaze I don't think so because you can use you can use multiple underglazes um, when the on your greenware, you know, and they can overlap. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I I would think that would be fine. So I like to if I wanted to like put a white underglaze over a dark clay, mm -hmm. and then while it's leather hard, and then use the watercolors over that still mm -hmm. while it's leather hard um, and then do the clear glaze just for the final firing with that. Right, it should thing? work. I was, um, now okay. you know that frost satin clear that I use a lot. I, um, it seemed to be changing the, I mean it's called clear, but it seemed to be changing the color of my piggy's ears because I carefully put pink on my piggy's ears and and I'd used a white underglaze, so it would sh the, the pink would show up better because it was on the speckled buff clay, the little slightly darker clay. But they ended up just looking white. The pink didn't show up at all, and actually uh -huh. it looked a little blue on the, on the piggy's tail. Was, 
the watercolors or just the regular underglaze? The, no, the well, it was, no, it was a regular, um, it was a white underglaze and then I put a regular pink glaze, the cherry blossom glaze on top. And it turned it, it rather than pink, it was little, has a little whitish blue, bluish white cast to it. Huh, so, interesting. yeah, that's what I thought. Not, not what I had gone for, but, um, you know, the chemicals in the clay ch change things. And so you don't, it's not, it's not the color wheel, you know, it doesn't obey um, the spectrum as we know it when we see it you know, in light, it's different because it's what I was different. reading about the underglazes, the velvet underglazes and the mm -hmm. regular Amico underglazes is that they, you can mix them and paint with them and they're pretty true to what you see. With the spectrum. Yeah. Is what they what were I understand. Saying. I had a friend who used a lot of those, um, one stroke underglazes mm -hmm. and, and did just amazing things with them. I haven't used them that much, so um, so the more you read about it, the better. I can't really help you out a lot, although knowing that um, you can uh, use them on your greenware, and even when it's leather hard, use them, and then as soon as they're dry to the touch, you can carve through them and do a siglata thing with that. And then if you carve through them, Here's another thought I have, like say I put a white or a black, what am I doing? A black underglaze over porcelain and then carve I'm into it. That, can, I then, um, can I then do watercolor into the carved areas? You mean where it's white? I don't know why not. Okay. Maybe, maybe have to wax the black so it doesn't soften and oh i don't think it. the the your watercolors are not going to show up affect the black underglaze it's right much, much um, thicker i mean that i was more thinking that the black underglaze would affect the watercolors would well it does not run yeah okay so right i don't think so but anyway okay okay how's everybody doing with their Good. thumb on the outside Good. Yours turned out symmetrical again. <laughs> did. Mine did. Way to go. Yeah. Well, you have very trained fingers. Well, I also have this this uh, lazy Susan thing. Mm -hmm. so I keep, I'm not holding it in my hand. I have it on the lazy Susan. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, mine turned out pretty asymmetrical. I tried to emphasize the finger. Oh you know, yeah. Up the side. That looks nice. So it's a little like a little shell like. Yeah. And I'll come back. Mine turned out. You can look for me at your door. <laughs> Mine turned out very. <laughs> like um, me by my bowl. Asymmetrical too. I like mine. It looks kind of like a coconut or something. It does look like a coconut. Oh yeah. I got a, I got a salt dish. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm gonna open mine up more. Oh, sweet, Jody. No light. Jody's is a mushroom. I got a mushroom. <laughs> I want to see it again. Oh, inside. There you go. <laughs> I want to see it, Jody. A mushroom, you, 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 can, you could stuff the mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Mary Jane, my other one, my first one with the uh -huh. porcelain has got loads of cracks on the outside. Yeah. Even though um, the clay is so soft, huh? Yeah, see, I mean, it must be really dry in here. So what do I well, do to, to remedy that? That's the deal with porcelain. That's why, um, that's why I was gonna switch this back to my face, I thought. Screen share, come on, where's the screen share? Um, the inside is like cream cheese and then the sides are all cracky. You might wanna wrap it. Right. Yeah, I, I had a towel on. Is that is that the key to wrap it right now and then go back and smooth it? Um, yeah, that's the key to it. Yeah, wrap it now. But that's the thing with porcelain. It can start out so wet and so soft. And as you stretch it, <clears throat> what, um, what 
um, Paulus was saying about and other I've heard other people say about it too is as soon as you notice a crack, especially in porcelain, if you don't want the cracks, because sometimes people do want it to be all cracky and and old looking, um, you need to smooth out that crack at the very beginning. Oh, I might just leave it all cracky and old looking. There's yeah. a lot. There's nothing bad about that. Okay. You disabled, the host disabled my screen sharing. No, I didn't touch anything. I know. <laughs> well, Zoom did it then. We'll blame it on Zoom because they're doing a bunch of crazy uh, things. Mary Jane. Mary Jane, um, I don't know if this is acceptable in clay world, but I'm doing pinch pots with the porcelain as I'm starting expanding it. I hold it in a slightly damp cloth so that the outside doesn't crack right away. <laughs> um, that's okay. You and so it that. stays a little I do a little it, it bit more. It seems to work that I get um, barbarian method. I just keep spitting on my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or dip your finger in the wine and use it. There you go. You don't that's have that there, wine. That's good. Though. That's a little that's acidic. Like I that's drink the wine, good. then I spit in yeah, my wine. Wine that would work, right? You'll get your minerals when you put spit in it. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? I just did myself in. Here we go. Okay, so this may be the last one we do. We'll see how long it takes. For this one, I think this one's kind of. Um, this is different. We're going, oh, actually there are two more I'd like to do. So the next one you take- only have one more ball of clay. You only have one more ball of clay? Uh-oh. No, I got slabs, but I am not turning those careful no. things. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, so divide your ball in half and just we'll make two bitty, bitty bowls. Yeah, and okay. <laughs> so this time, yeah. It's pretty hard to. This time you're going to not make a ball. You're going to make an asymmetrical shape. Oh. So it can be have flat sides or round sides or be square or whatever. Okay. And then you're going to decide where you're going to open it. You're going to look at your piece and say, hmm, I think I'll open it right here and just start pinching around and see, again, see where your pre the pressure of your fingers and the pinching takes you. Are you going to emphasize, you know, a, an edge? I have a kind of an edge here or smooth that you know, or pinch it so it smooths out. My top had kind of a flat area here, so I think I'll keep that. So you start picking and choosing where you're going to pinch and you're not pinching in any order in particular. This, this is all led by your eyes combined with your touch. And if your clay splits apart like that, you can leave the split or you can fasten it back together. And look for balance in your piece. You know, even though it's not symmetrical, does it feel balanced? Is it pleasing? Pleasing to you. Excuse me, Mary Jane. Someone, someone, Mary Jane, excuse me. Someone's texting me to see if they can get in, and I don't know who oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can admit her. Actually, it says, it okay. Says it came up on the bottom. You're I think. the host now. Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. Thanks for um, noticing because she was on the bottom. I said, Hi, Katya. Katya, can you hear us? There she is. There she is. Hi, Katya. Get your audio. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Oh, the sky's bright at her house. It's dark at mine. 
It's nighttime here. Yeah, it's nighttime here. <laughs> well, she's over Maxwell Parish oh, to Doe Bay. So yeah, a little western sun and Stop the that. light, but it's pretty dark. How are light you? behind you, Katya? For me? Behind you, that window is light. Yeah, there's still a little light, there's still light coming in from the western sky. Okay, so what are we doing on this one? So you're you're just taking your your shape that um, you started with, which could have been a square, a cube, or a asymmetrical shape, and you're pinching that out and seeing where it goes. Maybe um, maybe you want to emphasize a corner by pinching the outside together to make a stronger line down the corner. Maybe um, you want to make kind of a saddle in the bottom or pinch out your legs, but you're taking your cues from your clay as you're looking at it. And what, which way does the clay look like it wants to go? And not, not following a preconceived, not following something that you've thought up that no, you shouldn't have much of an idea of what it's going to turn out like. It's, this is like trying to listen to the clay and to your fingers and the shapes that are being formed. Um, neither emphasizing them or subduing them, you know, whatever seems like the right thing for your vessel or your clay expression. It looks like your clay is quite moist. It is. This is the new bag of desert gold. It's fun sometimes um, to do some of these little object lessons where there's no, um, no purpose other than the doing of it. And then, um, you know, set it aside and see what, how it looks to you the next morning. What does it look like <laughs> after you've kind of either just flowed with it or sometimes struggled with it a little, you know, where what sort of an emotion um, is your piece expressing back to it you? It looks like a, um, uh, uh, the chambers of a heart, like a heart cut in half and opened up Ooh. your piece. Yeah. You're the one well, that's having all the operations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that's on my mind. Huh? Where are the I'm feet? looking at Hawaiian Island. <laughs> oh, yeah. With like all the, the, oh, with it all, does. The valleys, all the valleys and the yeah. Did All right. you read yeah. any more about the eruption on the Big Island? Is oh, there a new there one? one? Yeah, yeah, there is a new one. It started not a few days ago. Yeah, glad I'm not there. When it first started erupting back in 1986, I was there on my honeymoon. When oh. It oh. Yeah. And all these. Same year I got married. All these volcanic clouds were in the sky, and it looked like Madame Pelly's face with hair flowing back behind her. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Quite dramatic. Actually, that's the same year that Bruce and I got married, too. Really? Yeah. Except, except I'm divorced. <laughs> that's quite a coincidence. Three people on one Zoom call all married in the same year. Mary Jane and I on the same exact day. What? No. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Funny, oh. not not to each other. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> oh. You're letting out all the secrets, Jenny. So here's another thing back to you were saying, looking at your piece the next day. And mm -hmm. I noticed with um, some of my uh, art where, well, when I was doing my car and specifically, I thought so much about what I was doing, what I was doing. But when I knew it was good was when I saw it, when I liked what I was looking at, when I wasn't thinking about it, when I just saw it and I was like, wow, that looks good. Yeah. Because it like so many times when I walk past my car, I was like, look at it. Is it good? Do I need to change that? Do I need to add this? Should I put, you know, but when I just saw it and went, wow, that looks good. That was to me the real test. <laughs> Yeah, when I work out, have worked on thing pieces that have taken a really long time, and I'm when with fabric kind of in the design phase for a really long time, I would try and walk in my studio and catch the piece by surprise, right? Like, like <laughs> walk in and like open my eyes all at once just to see what that flash was before I started thinking again mm -hmm. and it was um it works sometimes right you get a different view when you're yeah when you're not thinking does it look good does it look the way i want it to oh my I don't know. Mine have gotten a little bit <clears throat> complex. I wish they were simpler. Me too. I don't like them being so fussy. Mine has an assortment of edges. <laughs> That's a good way of describing it. Nice. Last um, spring, Sharon and I did several clay meditation classes where we did things like this, but there were, um, we put out an object, you, everybody would have their eyes closed, and we'd put out an object and everybody had little um, pieces, not even a handful, just a chunk of clay. <clears throat> and then you'd have exactly one minute to turn that piece of clay into a suggestion or like a doodle of the feeling that whatever you saw gave you. And it could be a pair of scissors, a ball of string, a feather, and you weren't supposed to try to copy it. It was just more how that would feel or sometimes or what that would do or the suggestion also was you could make a container to hold it, you know, but you had a minute and then you just put your clay down. And it was really fun to go back and look at them all, you know, look, some of them were just amazing and the others were kind of not, you know, nothing. You didn't, I didn't see anything in them, but just looking back at your own pieces that you were done like a little doodle, you know, just a little suggestion of emotion anyway. I'm not very like a men's <laughs> Mine is crazy. Not like in this one. Time to do something drastic. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe I needed to start with a more specific outer form before I made the inside so crazy. I don't mind the outside so much. Is it like pill up after? Like, I feel like I haven't touched it in a while, but I noticed like little pills of clay. Yeah, 
Um, it doesn't really peel up after it, but as it dries, it shrinks a little bit. So those little bits of clay show up a little bit more, but you can smooth them in now. It's still. Yeah. You have another student there? I have my daughter and her husband. Oh. Her son-in-law. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they take the class too. They're doing it with you. Lucky them. Yeah. We lucky. are lucky. Lucky me. First time. <laughs> maybe maybe when uh, when we're all meeting together, then they'll come have a class, an in-person class. That would be nice. Well, this guy. I'm gonna make mine into a flower. What? <laughs> Oh, if you want to really smooth it out, my daughter, then you have to wait till it's leather hard, till it hardens up some. Katya knows all about that because she smooths all the things with a spoon and you yeah. wait till it's leather hard and then you can polish them. Then you can get that real, an actual shine on the clay because what the rubbing does when it's hard enough is it allows the clay molecules to lock together and the platelets to flatten and so you actually get a shiny surface but <clears throat> adding water does not help it's the drying of it that will make you able to sh to polish it and get it super smooth and porcelain of course because it doesn't have any grog in it is the best but but actually the black clay some of the darker clays also seem to have very little grog in them and polish up beautifully and that's the clay, the Southwest clay and, and Mexican clay, the artist that did the beautiful um, black, um, was it Zuni or Hopi pottery that was just, mm -hmm. you know, glistening and low fired and anyway, pretty wonderful, wonderful stuff. I okay. have one of those pieces right here, I'll show you. This piece at a garage sale, if you can believe it or not. Oh, oh lovely. Is, it's a, one of those, it's from the Southwest. Um, it's like a story. I looked up the artist. Yeah. Here's the one. Martha Mirabal. Nice. Damn, I can't switch the camera. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's black clay, and parts of it are polished, and parts of it are not. There, there's one oh, that's beautiful. Not glazed. Oh, oh that's pretty. No, wow. it's not glazed at all. It's oh, just wow. Yeah. Really <laughs> lovely you, little is that one of yours? There's also a way. Uh, is that one of yours? It's one of Katya's. Um, no, it's one that she has from the south. <laughs> So there's also a special slip, a special mixture of slip that you could that you make through straining um, the slip that you can paint on to something you want to polish that allows you to get even a higher sheen because it has extra mica or extra something silica in it in the clay itself. Okay, the so last take the clay. That okay. Pardon? Was that a question? I said, would you take the clay that you're using and make a slip out of it and then strain it? Yes. Through like I, a mesh strainer to do that? Right. Um, and you let it, well, you let it, you have it in water, you let it settle. It's a, it's a multi-day process. And then you get this really fine okay. grain slip that you can paint on. And when it dries to a leather hard, you polish it and you can polish it better than just the plain clay. Um, I read about it and I was like, whoa, that sounds like a lot of work and I'm not polishing my things. So it's never happened in this studio, but it certainly could, somebody could do it. So the last exercise in pinching asymmetrical is to take your larger chunk of clay and just break off a piece and then look at what you have and make a pinch pot 
with the um, guiding guiding gesture of the hair being your guide. <clears throat> I'm not sure how in this book that I have, how his things came out so beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, so look at it. I also smushed up my last piece, so maybe I should use that. Yeah, or here. Yeah, just break off a piece, but break, you can break this in half. Or you, yeah, just make a little pot. I know, or we could cut another piece, but would you like a bigger piece? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just took a little piece too. Make a little salt fish or something. So in that case, you might want to really look at the folds and curves and try you try to preserve <laughs> preserve the preserve what you're given and then um, riff off of that and maybe um, maybe you don't do too much to it in order to keep the integrity of that tear. Um, in the book he talks about one um, student who were doing these exer he was doing these exercises. I mean, he was within a group doing exercises. And at the end of class, he just, he came back and handed the teacher the ball of clay, his original ball of clay. <laughs> there you go. And he was very serious about this. He said, I didn't feel that I could add anything to this. Oh. So then the more I thought he thought about it, the, the more perfect he felt it was, so. And somebody else who did a similar thing, and she said after she held a clay for a long time, she felt as if she did something to it, um, she would fall apart. Oh. <laughs> it become too much of a part of her. So anyway, he has done this with probably thousands, had done it with thousands of people. So did he recommend counseling or? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He was originally a dancer, and um, like here you're in a pottery class, and no, sorry, I'm not gonna. Move. Yeah, well, they really I got into that meditation part. So. Yeah, in touch with his internal. It was the time of the time, right? The times. Maybe so. Uh, they did that. Was that that? 70s, right? From what I read in his book, yeah, like 60s 70s, and 70s, 80s, yeah, yeah. He was probably do, uh, dropping acid with Timothy Leary while he was doing it. Those too. were the days, boy. I tell you, those <laughs> were the days. <laughs> I remember those days too. <laughs> hey, now acid people are taking small doses all the time, and it's curing schizophrenia and lots of depression yeah. and. Hearing I mean, people you're reading about if you're that, gonna do that, you have to not be on your meds. Probably, but it's oh, true. That in itself is scary. Yeah. I think they take the first trip, or I don't know. I've been reading, huh? seeing it. I don't read Michael, anymore, actually. But. Michael Pollan has a book out about that. Oh, really? About. Um, acid, uh, not acid, but uh, the mushrooms. The so mushrooms. Psilocybin. Yeah. How to change your mind. Called how to change your mind. There you go. That's it. Yeah, my yeah. daughter. My daughter knew about it. She said. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she reads a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. She reads about everything. I am so loving this pot. This is the best pot I ever made. Oh, good. I love this. Mine looks, so like, it, looks like, it like, like it could be a little, um, I could put a little yeah. pipe on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here's the one I've been working on since, I'm not doing this project. This is the I one from my, the oh, that's nice. Cool. All of the edges and it's nice and thin. Wow. Yeah. That looks we'll really nice, Suzanne. Oh. It's fun. This is nice. I'm still working on my picture. 
<laughs> oh, nice. I gave up. Mine's ugly. Your picture from last week? Yeah, because yeah. I had the clay and I didn't have any clay to make the handle till today. Hmm. So I'm just doing the handle now. Katya, I ended up not doing a handle on mine. I just crushed it in on the side so you could hold on to it. Oh, yeah. That's a possibility. Try yeah, I'm not recommending it, but that was just one way. <laughs> it is simple. It's when you want to be done with it. <laughs> yeah. It's not fun anymore. Well, handles are really tedious. They are, and they're tricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're tricky. Catching them, the shape. Yeah. They yeah. don't collapse. So maybe we should do a class on different handles. How to handle your hand. Yeah. Get a handle <laughs> on it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I could have um, Jan demonstrate pulling them, but then we'd practice it um, in the spring and when it's good weather and we can have buckets of water outside because it's messy. Uh, it's, it's messy to learn when you're, when you need a sink even when you know how or a big bucket because mm -hmm. you're dripping a lot of water as you do it, so. Is it like a sand castle? No, you have a ball of clay, Jan, mm -hmm. correct me, if I, and you're holding the ball of yeah. clay and you use your that. other hand in water and you're pulling, you're stretching the clay with your wet hand. And so it's all constantly dripping water. Right, Jan? Uh, kind of like milking a cow, I think. I yeah. usually, okay. I usually make it, it kind of in the shape of what I'm pulling, mm -hmm. kind of like that. And smooth it out because any little imperfection, or if you squeeze it too hard in one spot, it'll break there. So oh, you have to shape it there, I'm lying on first. But I can, yeah. I'll when we do this, when we do those, um, the handle one, I can. Yeah. But you kind of make a shape like this, and then you just start dipping your hand. I don't know there. Yeah. And then and you dip then your you, hand in water. It is like you, milking a cow. Yes. You keep stroking and stroking and stroking mm -hmm. the clay mm -hmm. to pull it out. It's called a pull, pulled handle, right? Right. And um, and they're they're very nice. But like I said, when I've practiced them, it's been messy. So it is messy, yes. But I think doing it outside would be really fun and watching each other mm -hmm. do it. So when the weather's nice, we'll do pulled handles all together. Yeah. It's kind of like throwing on a wheel where you use a lot of water, but you're not going around. You're just going in one direction. Mm -hmm. yes. I really like this, but it's so heavy that if I leave it like this, it'll be like a cauldron. <laughs> like an iron. Uh, mm. I can't wow. really see it. There's a lot of texture at the top. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can clean out the inside when it dries out some. Yeah. Well, Oak's been really carving hers a lot, right? And and so making a shape and then going back when it's leather hard and um, modifying that shape and and then um carve it with. Oak, what do you carve with? She's asking. Suzanne's asking. Uh, a variety of different scrapers. Yeah. So I'll show you. So actually, I like I like mine much better than my other one. These these are like anything <laughs> metal scraper. Carving tool. And all the Suzanne. Yeah. In the my yeah so all these different tools anything a plastic spoon yeah. works really well I'm um, not you. Let's see. so anything and i usually like start with I'm trying to think if i have one in that stage i'm not seeing you i don't know why these i see things, 
can't get away. Yeah. Tools like this. Where are you? Oh, okay. I don't know. What to do. Sometimes, if you have it, your screen might not be set for. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know how to help you. So I see. Oh. Okay. Okay. That's. Yeah. So, but the screen isn't on. Yeah, the screen is right. black. Well, there, it is. Suzanne, there's a lot of the same tools that I have that have wires on the end of them. Okay. Or they, it is, it's or on the to metal me. rib. Yeah. Or, like she said, this um, a plastic spoon is really useful, and you can okay. modify, sand down the plastic spoon to change the shape of it to a little oh, bit I see. sharper. Okay. Yeah. Anything that works. <laughs> That's a good yeah. answer. And I kind of. What um, this Paul Barron's um, what he said was, you happy holidays. You do the top. You leave quite a thick bottom, and you don't shape the bottom at all. And you, I leave quite a a lot amount of clay at the bottom, and then um, I do the top, and then I start carving, and it's almost like sculpting because the the form emerges from what I'm doing, and um, I don't know what it's going to happen until because sometimes something will a chunk will come off more than I thought. Uh -huh. or, so, but eventually some sort of form asserts itself that wants to be made. I don't know how else to describe it, but anytime I try and like really direct it beforehand, it's a mess. <laughs> so I have to do this process and then, um, I discover what's what I'm gonna make as I'm making it. There's there's oak. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah, it is. It's a I think it's a really nice way to look at clay and experiment with it. And a lot of times like what I start to make either I can't do, I'm not skillful enough yet. Or the clay says, "Sorry, we no, want to no, do no. Some, yeah. we want to do something else today." <laughs> yeah, you just have to give in, huh? Or something, some a, a new idea emerges that was better than the old idea. Ah, yeah, I think giving in to yielding to the clay, giving in to the clay, really. Um, is usually a good idea. It really helps you accomplish, get a better form in the end. Not fighting to make it conform to what your preconception was, but um, yielding. I like that. Yeah. Well, that's I, what's happening with this one of mine. <laughs> good. I was reading, I've, a friend gave me the book of um, a, about Tao and it, um, and one of the things says, um, yield and ye shall overcome. And I thought, ah, oh, that's a good lesson. Yeah. Okay, well, this was much better for me than the, the last one where you're supposed to make an asymmetrical shape and then make a bowl. I think that was, I like just working with the, the roughness of that was where I pulled it off. And then smoothing, and there, those were the, my finger marks. I accentuated them where I had grabbed it off. They'll use a little work, but be a good little salt dish has a little place for a spoon. <laughs> I want to show mine. I think it's fun. Yeah. This is the most fun I've had. That's oh, beautiful. Fun. Beautiful, Suzanne. So it's got mm. all these different edges and oh, wow. Really nice. So is that is that number two or number three? Number three. Number three. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, pinching is. I mean, it it's was probably one of the first ways people ever made clay, did anything with clay, and it's certainly what children do when they first get clay, but uh -huh. um. You know, it's endless. Again, there's so much you can do with it. And, um, you know, Katya's pinched bowls become these symmetrical works of art. 
And so you, you can go in every direction with pinching. And you can even make things that are huge by adding on um, coils and things too. There's not, it's, it's really as limitless. And um, whereas throwing, you're really restricted by what you can do on the wheel. Of course, you can always take it off the wheel and then modify it with hand building, but, um, and throwing can be very satisfying, but I found it too repetitious, really, even though, even though none of my pots look, look the same, let me tell you. They did not look alike. I never would have allowed myself an asymmetrical pot <laughs> before today. No, I know. I am a little bit too, like, I guess, but I really like yes, this I one. Oh, it's all over. What I like mean, this one oh, here. It just has a life. Mean, I didn't mean oh, it to be all over. I don't know why. And I, this one, the one I pulled out, I love it, has a life. <laughs> but you have to sit up straight. Okay, I was just trying to get my face back on the screen, but when I tried to share it, back. it went off. Yeah. So I. I'll have to do, I, when I turn my camera, look, it's so, it looks like I'm lying. Oh, I love that one. That one came out neat with the pointy, like a, like you said, I think it was a pipe. Yeah, it's like That's a little. Oh, there's hers. Corn of That's copia. Pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's sweet. That is. It's very different. Mm-hmm. Almost looks like an oil lamp. It does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of old. Of old. Well, it does look old. <laughs> so good good job you guys i yeah, did um fun. i did write out a bunch of notes which i will send you talking about the just giving brief descriptions of the four different pots we did four or five anyway yeah. and have a have a happy holiday and Merry Christmas. Oh, you do. Thank you just so much for the class. No, you're so welcome. And yeah. I, I do have more clay now. So I will come by and get it. Now I realize only these two slabs. Uh huh. And yeah, my gift so. to myself for Christmas is no work for three days. Awesome. <laughs> no what? I'm not going to work. It's hard. I'm self-employed, so it's hard for me to sometimes not work. So I'm not for three days. For three Good for days. you. You deserve it. So I'm looking forward. So I might need a lot of clay. Okay. Well, I was going to um, call Yuriko and see how much, because I know they have a lot of clay. See if I could get some Oregon Brown, because it turns out... I didn't order any. They had a limit to what they could carry back because they were coming I bet. with a full car too. Anyway, so I got four boxes. So I do have clay. I just don't have every single color. There's one. And Savvy color. wants to put some finish on the boards. They're cut, but he wants to put some finish on them so they'll last longer. I'm. I tell him. I'm hoping we don't need to use them past this winter. <laughs> Well, we'll see what he, what he decides. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, you, you don't, he does what he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it has, Well, thank you so much. My cats are very hungry and expecting their five o'clock feeding yes. 28 minutes ago. I've right. put my chickens in. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you for doing this class. Thank you, Mary Jane. Love to you and your family. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.